As you can tell, Sam's excited about our next video. <laughs> okay. Um, so we're talking about Megamind, um, which is my favorite animated movie. Uh, well, like 3D animated movie. Um, I've watched it a lot. It's a good time. I actually have no idea who makes it. Uh, it's, a, it's a DreamWorks film. So it's a DreamWorks film. It stars Will Ferrell, Brad Pitt, uh, Tina Fey, uh, Jonah Hill. Jonah Hill's great. Yeah, he, he <laughs> he's really good. Will Ferrell also, he does a very, very, very good job. Yeah, uh, who, play, who plays Metro Man? Metro Man is played by Brad Pitt. All right, um, yeah. I, I also love Brad Pitt. This cast is awesome. <laughs> <laughs> oh. All right, um, all right, well, Steph, break it down. All right, so stepping step into the world of Metro City, you have the do-gooder Superman-esque hero known as Metro Man, voiced by the one and only Brad Pitt, and then you have his over-the-top nemesis known as Megamind, and his minion, whose name is Minion, played by David Cross, uh, who are out for... Uh, earthly destruction, and their main goal is to defeat Metro Man, as most villains' uh, j dream jobs are, and to take the city for their own. Now, the part where this movie switches it up is, you know, he succeeds. Yeah. Or at least he believes he succeeds. And then it focuses on, you know, the villain's point of view when he doesn't have a hero uh, to fight. Yeah. You know, so Sam, what do you think of the fact that, you know, we're finally getting to see uh, a villain, so to speak, win, but it wasn't in the live action film from Marvel or DC, but it's from a, you know, a family film from DreamWorks. Yeah, so I guess what's kind of fun, for, for one, Megamind uh, is an alien, uh, so is Metro Man. Uh, they've been enemies since they were children, um, but they were both kind of like ejected from their planets while their planets were exploding. Uh, and while Metro Man lands in, um, like, like this upscale, rich, white neighborhood, uh, and he gets, like, everything that he could possibly want, he can fly, he can shoot lasers, he's Superman, he's just Superman, <laughs> uh, minus kryptonite, that, that doesn't exist, uh, at least not in this show, um, Mega Man, on the other hand, uh, lands in, in a prison, uh, and is raised by the prisoners, um, and uh, also, he's an ugly blue man with a giant head. Uh, so, <laughs> while Metro Man is, like, super powerful, Megamind, uh, his main power comes from, like, his big brain, right? Because, you know, big head, big brain. Um, and he creates a whole bunch of tools uh, to help him fight off, uh, or defeat, hopefully, eventually, Metro Man. Uh, and he has a sidekick, Minion, who's a fish uh, who, well, is like a big fish inside of a bull. Um, so anyways, uh, getting back to what you were asking, kind of the point of this film and what's cool about it is that, uh, instead of in movies like, uh, like Joker, yeah. where, um, you know, he succeeds, but then he kind of is just insane, right? Uh, and it ends there. Um, or when Thanos... Right, he he completes his goal, and then he's like, "I'm gonna be a farmer." Um, <laughs> Mega Mind realizes, like, "Yeah, I'm a bad guy. Like Zangief is a bad guy, but does that really mean that Zangief is a bad guy? You know, like Mega Mind isn't actually evil. He is just uh, the opponent of Metro Man. So after Metro Man's defeated, his new life purpose stops being being evil and it starts to become like, you know, how can I how can I become better? And and uh that that's inspired by love, which is something that I don't know, maybe maybe Stefan will tell you more about. Sure, certainly. I think before we touch on, you know, uh, the change right uh in the story direction, could you say though, like, had the tables been reversed, right? If Megamind was in a house and nurtured with love. Not that the prisoners didn't love him, but he's totally a product of his environment, right? Yeah. He's surrounded by people who perhaps are in jail for horrid, horrid things. And they're like, hey, this is how you do things. This is, you want to shank, you go like this. You know what I mean? Uh, that's a bad accent. I apologize. So anyhow, but uh, like like Sam is saying, right? It's it's definitely more of a, a character study of a villain, right? Like Like coming to terms with... Am I really a bad person, or am I just 
been cast in that role, so I've been trying to live up to that for so long. And Tina Fey's character in the movie definitely comes into play because... Roxanne Ritchie. There you go. Love that alliteration. Oh, yeah. uh, so, you know, Mega Man at this point has... Mind. Oh, Mega sorry, Mega Man. Mega 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 Man. Mega Man. They're both blue, though. <laughs> they are both blue. Yeah. Sorry. Uh, so Mega Man is, is, is sad. He's sad about the loss of his foe. And, um, you know, he's at the Metro Man Museum, and Roxanne Ritchie rolls up, and then he quickly uh, has this funky device that lets him uh, transform himself into uh, the body of anybody that he... Uh, yeah, 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 the body of anyone who... Bernard. <laughs> Bernard! Yeah, so he shoots this, like, lowly librarian dude with this, like, type of transformation gun. Bernard becomes a square... Square. You know, yeah. He's a little cube. Little cube, yeah, dude. A little cube. And uh, it's, uh, it's the dehydration ray, and it um, turns you into a little dehydrated cube. If you add water, though, like it, the person becomes a person again. Yeah, it's like a tree. Just a yeah. <laughs> so yeah. anyway, the point the point I'm making is Roxy Ann and Mega Mind share in the in a moment of missing Metro Man, right? And the fact like they he feels like. He doesn't have a purpose anymore, and she feels like, you know, the city no longer has a savior. And love certainly can be an inspiring thing. You know, it definitely makes people change, right? Um, Saddam Hussein once threatened to blow up Bobby Brown if, if he kept on hitting <laughs> uh, Whitney Houston. So you just never know how it's going to affect somebody. Um... So, and that kind of alters his trajectory, right? That gets a lot of personal growth. And it's nice to see that change. And, but in order to be the hero, though, right, he decides that there needs to be a villain of caliber to prove himself yeah. as this new hero. Yeah, like, uh, well, actually, not really. No, because he's trying to make things go back to normal. Like, I he doesn't that, right? want to be the hero yet. He only ever wants to be the hero because this new bad guy that he made, or this new good guy, whose name is Titan, uh, also likes Roxanne Ritchie, except he, he does it all in the wrong way and terrifies Roxanne Ritchie. And then Roxanne breaks his heart, and then Titan, like, starts destroying the city and is, like, trying to kill um, Roxanne. So Megamind comes out to fight him. Um, so could you argue yeah. then, like... The world maybe perhaps needs bad men to keep worse men at bay. That kind of thing is, is that, that just a going? Batman quote? I mean, you're not wrong. Uh, I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. So like, kind of. Um, it's actually Matthew McConaughey, a True Detective. Oh, that's yeah, what it is. Yeah, that's okay. What, that's right. All right. Yeah. So yeah, I guess that that works. Uh, one other thing that I kind of appreciate—it's kind of a side tangent—is that Megamind realizes that his best friend is actually just Metro Man. Because they've been fighting for so long. Like, mm. they've had, uh, they've known each other since they were children. They also go to shul together, which is the appropriate way to pronounce school in this world. <laughs> uh, so, um, so yeah, so they've known each other a long time and they've always had, like, conflict with each other. Um, so, but in, in the end, they become, like, best friends, even though Metro Man, uh, you know, is dead and in hiding. Uh, yeah. So I don't know. It's a, uh, it's it's a good film. Uh, it's kind of like a roller coaster of a superhero, supervillain character study. Um, you know, fueled by jealousy and love and and like you know all the emotions under the sun. And simultaneously, it's also a, a pretty competent comedy. Um, you know, it has a lot of big names uh, for the comedy world in it, and uh, it definitely delivers in uh, in that regard. Uh, it is dry humor though, so like if you're if you're into dry humor, you'll probably be into this. Absolutely, you know. And if you're a fan of like uh, The Incredibles, Incredibles two, this one I would argue is just like uh, like a pinch more, like maybe PG twelve, you know, PG ten, right? Like uh, there's there's something in it for everybody. Not quite thirteen. Not quite thirteen. It's yeah. a little bit under the bar, but you know. Uh, very, very, very well done, and, um, you know, David Cross, I think, as Minion, kind of steals the show in a yeah. lot of ways. Yeah, I, I'll take my thing and leave. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. You know? So, David Cross, I really hope somehow down the, the line there's a sequel, Megamind 2, I'd love to see you and Will Ferrell 
you know, be back at it together. Yeah. Sam, you want anything you want to add before no. we split? I mean, I think we covered it. I think I think it was pretty good, yeah. Definitely check out Megamind, though. Movie solid. Um, yeah. No, I don't know. And stay tuned for our next video.